What's good, everybody? I'm Mr. Peters. Today, we're going to be talking about substitution with systems of equations. And I'm going to show you guys four very helpful tips to make the substitution process very simple for you. So first step, guys, what we have to understand with substitution and systems of equations is we have to solve for one of the variables. So in our first equa in our first problem, I'm sorry, we should see that our first equation, right, they solved for x. And when they say solve for x and y, we just want to get it by itself. x is equal to and the rest of the equation or y is equal to and the rest of the equation. So in this first problem, they kind of helped us out a little bit, right? Yeah. So after we solve for our variable, the next step we need to do is to now take that and take that equation and plug it in, substitute it into the other equation. And this is what I mean. So if we look at our second equation, anywhere that we see x, we're going to plug in parentheses 3y plus 16. That's the substitution part. So we have 3y plus 16. We're going to close the parentheses and write the rest of the problem, minus y is equal to 9. And at this step, guys, we're, we're solving a regular equation. So we're going to start off by distributing. So we'll have 12y plus 64 minus y is equal to 9. Combine our like terms to get 11y, right, 12y minus y. And we're going to write the rest of this equation. All right, so we still haven't solved for y, guys. And once we do get y by itself, we should have 11y is equal to negative 55. That's, that's after we subtract 64 on both sides, right? So now we get our final answer, and we've learned that y is equal to negative 5. So what exactly does that mean? One... We know what y is equal to now. And two, we could go and uh, figure out what x is now equal to. And what I like to tell students is pick the equation that you feel is easier for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug it into the first equation. I think that would be easier for us. So we're going to go out here in red. And now x is equal to three times, and remember now, guys, y is negative five. Negative, negative five plus 16, right? And we're going to follow the order of operations. It's like it's a regular equation. So we have negative 15 plus 16, and we're going to get an answer of x is equal to one. Now, remember, this is systems of equations, guys. So that means we're going to have two graphs or two lines on that graph and we need to know that at the ordered pair one negative five this is where these two lines intersect so if the question asked you what is the point of intersection you would say one five at that point that ordered pair so we'll box this off and then what we're, what we're going to do in our second example is we're going to look at equations where they did not solve, right? They did not solve for any of the variables. So let's write this out. So this is equation number one. And then we're going to switch colors and we're going to go and do equation number two. So equation number two is 10x. And just remember, when we're using a substitution method, guys, we could solve for either variable, okay? Biggest thing is to make sure that you go back and solve for the other variable. So when I'm looking at this problem here, I like the first equation because I noticed that this x doesn't have a number in front. So I think it would be a, it would be very easy to solve for that variable, right? This is probably one step. So we're going to take this out here to the right. And what happens is after I add 3 on both sides, right, we'll have x is equal to 3y minus 2. So that means anywhere that we see x in the second equation, right, we're going to plug in 3y minus 2 for x. So let's do that. 
So we have 10 times, and then you know, put it in parentheses. That's what we like to do. 3y minus 2. Close our parentheses, and then we're going to write the rest of the equation. All right, so similar to the last problem, guys, we are going to start off by distributing. So we have 30y. So this is where we should be at after we distribute. And we still, have to, we still haven't solved for y. So there's two things we could do. We could combine both our y's or we could bind the 20s. But what I'm going to do, let's just combine the y's. That's a, quick, that's a quick little step, right? So once we do this, we have 38y minus 20 is equal to negative 20. So this is where a lot of students get confused right here. Because if you notice, our 20s are going to cancel out. So I'll, I, I do this last step. And, you know, let me know. Are you, are you a little confused at this step here? Because we have zero. So at this step, we have 38y is equal to zero. And before we go on to the next step, if you found this video helpful, we're going to ask that you just hit the like button for us and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. All right, back to the problem. So guys, here, what we have to understand is that this answer, or what y is equal to, y is going to be equal to zero, guys. We still have to go through and solve for the equation, solve for the variable. So our answer is y is equal to zero. That is going to be our answer. All right. A lot of times we get confused and think, oh, maybe we did something. I know y or x should be like a number bigger than zero or smaller than zero. Negative, that is. And that's not true. Sometimes the answer can be zero. So now, you know, we got our, we, we know what y is. The next thing is to figure out what X is, guys. And a very helpful tip for me to you is this, right? We substitute, we solve for X or Y, right? We got it by itself. We plugged it into the other equation and solved. Now, like I said, we got to figure out X. And guys, just please remember, pick the easier equation. The first equation is a lot easier, right? Numbers are smaller we could get an answer probably better without making any mistakes. So once we do that, we're going to have x minus 3 times 0 is equal to negative 2. And, you know, once we simplify this, guys, we know that 3 times 0 is 0. So we know x is equal to negative 2. All right? And if we're asking for the point of intersection, do these lines intersect? Yeah. So our point of intersection in this problem would be negative two, zero. So they will intersect at a certain point. And what we're going to do in our next video, I'm going to explain to you guys when there's more than one point of intersection and when there's no point of intersection. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. This is Alderon with Mr. Peters. Join us next time.